All right, today we're gonna to talk about how to use your Ultima USB. You plug it into your computer, you see a whole bunch of files and folders and stuff. That's not really what the use case is. You need to boot from the USB. So first of all, congratulations on your amazing purchase and thank you so much for your support. You have the true Swiss Army knife of IT tech tools at your disposal. Okay, before we jump into how to boot from this USB, check out the video that I linked in the email that I sent you after your purchase. I also sent you a QR code printed out with some other documentation in the packaging itself. Scan that or click the link and you'll be brought to the video where I show you how to back up and restore your drive. Please, please do that first before you get into anything else. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a couple things here today. The main topic is how do you boot into the USB because that's what it's made for. It has 50 other bootable environments on it. So you need to actually boot into it from when your computer powers up. So you got a couple options to start with. You can plug in your USB first and then restart your computer, or you can shut your computer down completely, plug in the flash drive, and then power it on with the flash drive plugged in. Either one doesn't really matter how you do it. Um, it's gonna get you the same results. So when your computer is powering back up, your USB drive is now plugged in. Next thing you need to do is tap the boot menu shortcut key. I'm using an HP today, so it's gonna be F9. Look yours up. I'll, I'll include some very common ones for different manufacturers in the description below. You can always Google search your computer's model if you've built your own. Chances are you know how to do it already, but if not, Google search the uh, motherboard itself and that'll give you the boot key shortcut. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Before I do that, I wanna call out a couple very important things. In my environment, I disable secure boot. This makes it so much easier to boot into a Ventoy stick or you know, non-Windows bootable environments. By default, most computers today are gonna have secure boot enabled. You do what you want. I'm not trying to give you security advice here, but I recommend if it's your computer, there aren't a lot of other people accessing it, only people that you, you know, your family, people that you trust. I really don't see a need for secure boot enabled personally. Now you take that and, you know, chew on it and do what you want with it, but just know that it's going to make it so much easier to boot into things like the ultimate USB when secure boot is disabled. Okay. So in my environment, again, I disable secure boot and I also enable legacy support. And we'll talk about that here in a second when we get to that. Now, another very important thing to note, if you're using BitLocker, make sure you have the recovery key before you make any changes in your BIOS or UFI settings. Because a lot of changes will require BitLocker to say, hey, give me that recovery key. Someone made a change. I need to make sure this is you, the owner of this computer. Hence, you know, the prompt for the BitLocker key, which only you should have. Uh, one way to check that is you can just open up, start and search for BitLocker. And you'll see manage BitLocker. You can also find that in the control panel. And in my case, I have the option to turn it on for both of these drives. So it is turned off at this point. Just make sure, again, if you guys are using BitLocker, that you have that recovery key before you change any settings in BIOS or UFI. If you change a setting and it requires BitLocker, you're going to lock yourself out of your computer if you don't have that recovery key. So that's very important. If you're using BitLocker anyway, Definitely make sure you have that key because other things can happen and you can literally lose all your data. I've seen it happen way too many times. BitLocker is strong full disk encryption and there's not really any way around it. If you're locked out, you're going to be locked out. So let me know if you guys need help on getting that key. If it is enabled and you've lost it, there are simple ways to get it as long as you can boot into the computer today. So you're going to want to have that key regardless of circumstances. If you use BitLogger, make sure you have your recovery key. Okay, with that long-winded warning out of the way, <laughs> hopefully that sunk home, let's go ahead and boot into this. So again, I'm gonna do a, it's already plugged in. You see there's two partitions. This is the Ventoy boot partition itself, and then this is the meat and potatoes. Uh, yours will probably be 256. This is one that I'm prototyping the Ultimate V3 on. Uh, way more of that to come later on, but yeah. Reboot and then tap your boot menu key. Again, HP's F9, and I'll have some other common ones in the uh, description. So we'll get this rebooted and we'll start tapping that boot key. All right, so this is my boot menu. Yours may look a little different. You see I have the 
legacy option, and I also have the Eufy option. That's because I've enabled that option within my BIO settings, and I'm gonna show you that in just a second as well. But for now, let's get booted into the Ultimate USB version 2.1. Password protected, you will get this upon your purchase. If you've already purchased one, you should have this. Obviously, ping me if not. I've had a few people you know, lose it or forget it, and I'm always here to help. All right, so this is the Ultimate USB version 2.1, and it's that simple to boot into it. So this is how you want to use the USB. You don't just plug it in while your system's booted and you know, load an ISO or something like that. You want to boot into this environment. This is what it's made for. So I have videos going through all these, but let's say you know maybe you wanted to run this portable version of Windows, which is fully installed. It's got its own VHD of 30 gigs. A video coming soon on how to expand that on the fly as well, guys. You would just go to desktop OS category, go down to this and hit enter, and boom, you'd boot right into a fully installed version of Windows 11 Pro Lite. Uh, bring your own keys, by the way. I don't do any piracy. I don't you know, support that. I don't want people to do that. So get your own keys, activate your own stuff. Uh, that's for Windows. Obviously, mo the majority of the stuff on this stick is open source. There's no activation needed. So, All right, so that is how you boot into it. Let's go ahead and reboot again, and we'll take a look at some common BIOS settings that you may need to look into if you can't boot from your USB. All right, so every computer again has a boot menu hotkey. They also have a BIOS or system setup hotkey, F10 for HP. Again, just Google search your different computer models, motherboard models, things like that, and you'll get you pretty easily locate the uh, shortcut keys for booting into things like BIOS setup, boot menu, so on and so forth. All right, so for today, we're going to take a look at some boot-related options here. Uh, just note that this is HP's uh, current at the time of releasing this Elite Desk anyway, BIOS setup. Every BIOS looks a little different. They have different ways of categorizing things. You may have to poke around a little bit, or again, Google's your friend, ChatGPT's your friend, right? You can find these settings by just searching. All right, so mine are going to be under advanced today, and boot options is the first one. Right here is pretty self-explanatory. If you don't have this enabled, you're not going to be able to boot from a USB. So make sure, what, however your BIOS words it or wherever they put it, you have USB storage boot turned on. Otherwise, yeah, you're not ever going to be able to get in. Okay, so you can see this is not necessary. I see a lot of people recommending, oh, change the boot to go to USB first. I don't really recommend that. I mean, I have done that for the legacy option because I do a lot of testing and things like that. But no need to really do that, right? If you know how to get to your boot menu, now if you can't get to your boot menu for some reason, then yeah, you probably have to go this route. But you, that is an option. You can move your boot order around to make the USB go first. I don't really recommend that unless you absolutely need it, but it's there if you do. Okay, so that is boot order and obviously the big one, enable the ability to boot from the USB itself. Outside of that, we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at some secure boot configuration options. Now, sometimes this is under different categories. Mine's advanced and then secure boot configuration. Here's the important one right here, guys. Legacy support enabled and secure boot disabled. Uh, more of the latter, the secure boot disabled. If you don't have secure boot disabled, you're going to need to boot, or I'm sorry, you're going to need to install the Ventoy secure keys into your MOK or your machine-owned keys, right? Um that part can be a little tricky just depending on your computer. Depends on where you can import those. Some of them prompt as you're booting, do you want to install this key? Others, you have to go in there and manually, in, manually install the keys kind of from the BIOS side of things ahead of time. We could do a whole other video on that, but my recommendation is if you're going to be booting from Ventoy, just disable secure boot. It makes things a lot cleaner and a lot easier. Okay, so once you have secure boot disabled, this is optional. I mean, I would turn it on because now you can boot into legacy if your computer supports uh, CSM or BIOS legacy boot. Definitely worth turning on. Uh, some things work better when booted out of BIOS versus Eufy as far as these bootable environments. I tested all of them on both and they all work in BIOS and they all work in Eufy. So you should be good to go. But just a kind of a pro tip, if you can enable that and you don't have a good reason to have it disabled, go ahead and enable legacy support and then disable your secure boot. It's just going to make things a lot easier. That could be another video if you guys need secure boot enabled on how to install the keys and things like that because it really is more particular to your computer 
it changes from manufacturer to manufacturer, from, you know, firmware to firmware, how and where you do that and when in the process of booting or beforehand, things like that. But here's my recommendation. Um, again, I'm not giving you security advice. If you have a computer that's out in the open for some reason, um, maybe you don't want to use that one for booting into USBs to start with. But that, if that's your only option, or if you're using it at work and it's a computer that a lot of people on, you can always disable Secure Boot. And then when you're done booting Vento and all that, just turn it back on. It only takes a couple minutes. All right. So again, warning, 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 right? If you make these changes and you have BitLocker enabled on your computer, make sure you have the recovery key. If you don't, you are going to get locked out of your computer and I will not be able to help you. I cannot get past Microsoft full disk encryption for you. It's just not a thing. <laughs> there are some ways uh, that under certain conditions, depending on how it's configured, you can do it with some different attacks. Um, don't get yourself in that situation, though. It's a bad spot to be in. All right, so if you got BitLocker enabled, make sure you have that recovery key. Come in here, disable secure boot, enable legacy support, save this. I'll hit F10, and I'll say yes. I didn't really make any changes, but that's fine. Go back to the boot menu, and you'll have your USBs listed here, both legacy and UFI in my uh, scenario. And then I'll just boot into it, and there you are. You're back in. Uh, yeah, you're in. This is what the Ultimate USB was meant to be used for, booting into it. And then you go into all these different environments that are live. A lot of them have persistence, so you can save your work, all that good stuff, right? But this is how you want to use it. You want to boot into the USB from when your computer's powered off. Boom, boot right into there. So you're not in your Windows environment or whatever your OS is. You're in the actual Ventoy uh, bootloader where you can access all these different bootable environments hence the name bootable usbs hopefully this helped guys um again first steps first back that usb up make sure you know whether or not bitlocker's on if bitlocker's on get that recovery key if you can't get the recovery key or you don't know how to find it let me know i can make another video showing you how to get the recovery key but you definitely need that recovery key before you start changing anything in your system setup, your BIOS setup, your UFI settings, any of that stuff. Because you will get locked out if you don't have the recovery key. Very important. All right. Let me know if you guys have any trouble booting into the Ultimate USB. Or if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And I will definitely do my best to answer any questions.